welcome to US City 360. I'm Didvar Shatterson. When deciding to move, many families not only consider how beautiful the home looks, how functional the space is, and how welcoming the neighborhood feels, they also think about how good the schools are. Of course, this luxury is designated mostly to those who can afford to do so. In a study published in the Teachers College Record, children growing up in poor communities have limited access to high-performing schools, while more affluent neighborhoods tend to have higher-ranking schools and more opportunities for after-school programs and activities. This means that huge disparities among local schools can possibly exist and be quite large. However, what happens when a single community is made up of families from both ends of this spectrum? The California State Department of Education, among many more, awards the title of Distinguished School to those schools who have a high academic performance index, but also who have made significant strides in closing the achievement gap. One of those, Fred Ekstrand Elementary. So let's visit them now. A beautiful day, huh? I have been told that X-Strand is very caring, interested. We truly believe that every child can be successful. You guys have worked so hard this year, and I have to tell you, your parents, your teachers, all the staff are so proud of you. And this morning, it's all about you guys. We have made great strides in making sure every student here at X-Strand becomes a grade level reader and also has good math skills. We want to do a little celebration this morning, give you some awards for your very, very hard work this morning, okay? Often I have parents come and talk to me because their child hasn't done well in another school and they're looking for a place that will embrace their child. They say, I know my child has problems, but I need someone to love and help my child. And we've often been told that we have that ability to become that for their students. So some people might be surprised that we do absolutely have students here who are struggling. When I first started five years ago at Extran Elementary as the principal. Hey, how you guys doing? I found a very hard working staff, one that was very dedicated to their students. How's everything going? But we needed to unite around students getting them to grade level in reading. And you can show them personalities as you go. When I started working in fifth grade here, students were getting to me at ages 10, 11, 12, not reading, not reading well, not well enough to survive. If you have an older sister, color every other space yellow if you have a younger sister. I knew that it was a Title I school, which means it could be low income or it could be socioeconomic challenged. So our area, San Dimas, has a socioeconomic level of working parents. We're probably the area closest to Pomona, and a lot of students come to us from that area. And the socioeconomics of that city are quite low. I believe it's 60 or above percent of our students get reduced or free lunch. And this number has really gone up quite a bit over the last probably four years because economics, many people have lost their jobs. We also have a number of families who live at local motels. The Motel 6 here in town, the Red Roof Inn, they're sitting in hotel rooms with people smoking all day and all night. I can imagine what it would be like to try to get my homework done. We also pull from high socioeconomic areas. So the homes that immediately surround us, those students are the students that always have books at home, that grew up with nursery rhymes and fairy tales. And so what happens is you get, even at five years old, some students almost ready to read, if not reading very simple books, to they don't know their colors, they can't count to 10. You just have such a variety of levels. Okay, I'll read you some of the words. Summer, hiking, who's ever been hiking? As a teacher, it is a bit of a challenge to plan instruction for students who are low and students who are high because you do not want the low students to give up because it's too hard for them. You also do not want the high students to be bored. So we did some training, we did some reading, we did some researching into good curriculums and came to the strategy to kind of put kids together in levels the lower group was with an intervention teacher and the middle group with another teacher, and so they really received individualized attention. But many of our students, it's not just about this academic piece. For some of those students, they could be the student who is living in a hotel, shelter, 
And so there's not an adult in their life to intervene and care about them and care about how they're doing. Jason, you need one more minute? Although I feel that our school is doing the best job that we can and a wonderful job at meeting students' needs, it's almost impossible to meet 100% of their needs. What do I wish? I wish that I had more one-on-one -on -one time with my kids, but there is only one me. So we need people. Okay, so after the class on compassion, were the kids behaving in a compassionate way? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, what do they do? They don't They're do all this stuff. That's right, they were helping. Okay, how did they help? We've been teaching character education lessons since 2006, and we've had very good responses from all the schools that we teach at. If somebody's teasing you, you don't need to shout at them, you don't need to get angry, you can just walk away. Okay. Is it cloudy or is it clear? Clear. Clear, so is that, are you angry right now? Your thoughts are clear? Or are you not angry? What do you think? At Lytle Creek, the principal told me that, you know, the classes we teach, they notice a reduction in terms of referral tickets that they had to issue to students. How would you feel if you were shy and you have to grow up with that genetic disease? How would so you feel? So the statistics are very evident that when a child goes through a character education program, he or she will actually think more about her actions and behaviors so ideally, going forward, we would like to expand this program to, you know, more classrooms, to more schools. But certainly when you run a program long enough, you're going to encounter all kinds of different unexpected situations. You know, budget cuts at the school district. One year, one school district laid off 152 employees and a good portion of the 152 people were teachers that were longtime supporters of Tsuji. And it just makes things very challenging for our program. And every time when there's a major change like that, it takes a lot of effort on our end to approach the new administration, explain to them what Tsuji is all about. So usually that takes a little bit of time and is kind of the step back. We feel that the master's teaching and character education are so central to a child's development that we wanted to share that with more children. But in order for us to reach more students, to enter more classrooms, we need to develop more partnerships with outside schools. I think as a principal, you're always looking for what do all the kids need. And so what made me want to start the tutoring program on campus was we had a lot of students that were maybe doing well academically or may not, but really didn't have an adult in their lives that was caring and consistent. And so I did reach out to the community. I did have several other community partnerships, but they just weren't as committed. Yeah, we've had a number of community groups come in to do coaching, reading, tutoring with our students. The problem I always found was that um, there was no consistency. I think really what it was is it was a group from a particular community type partnership and they just came. Usually it was just academic. They would sit down, maybe read a story or something. Those people didn't come weekly and it was really patchy so that maybe it was like once a month and that's not helpful to me. I don't need once a month. The kids forget in a month. And while we always enjoy volunteers that just want to come and maybe read with some first graders or kindergartners, these are kids who really need to see themselves differently. They need some positive reinforcement. Often everything with them is they make poor choices and then there's this punitive consequence and they're not learning to be better citizens. So I just was excited when I first talked to Paulina. At a local San Dimas event, the CEO of Education Foundation, Sister Paulina Luan, actually met the principal at Extran. When I first met the principal, Lucinda Newton, from the first meeting, I was really very excited. She was much more committed than anyone else I'd ever spoken to. Because we're talking, and then uh, we both do a lot of homework. So we share, we come up with a game chart, we come up with a plan. 
I wasn't exactly sure because I had never had a community partnership that had worked. Just from that day, I know our partnership start right there. But I just felt like right away this could be something different. Because we have a common goal, it's education. So we held a meeting at Xtrand and we talked about what Siji can offer, what kind of programs, and the principal expressed to us that they have a group of students and those children really need someone to, to stay with them, someone to coach them, someone to tutor them. But traditionally, the R&D team within Siji's education department has only done character education. However, when there is a need that's expressed by a school, we try to meet that need. I'm Phil Huang. I'm a staff of the CG Education Foundation. The starting point for me to get into this tutoring program is because that day our volunteer can come. So my boss asked me whether you want to come. My name is Stephanie, and uh, actually I am a practicing dentist. I have been helping out with the career to career education for a few years. Mainly it's just helping out to facilitate the class or something like that. My expectation on the first day being a volunteer in this program was, wow, it's a volunteer, that's huge, that's education, I want to do a lot, and I, I think I can change a student's life. What do we got today? Oh, what a book. Oh. And, uh, through this tutoring program, I could be involved a little bit deeper with the individual. I was a teacher in Nanyang Street, which is the most famous uh, cream school business in Taiwan. I taught like 200, 300 students at one time. But the first day, when I get really close to your heart... Put it down. Come back. Can we do something easier? No. 12 is bigger than 6 by... 12 is 12 by 6? 18 is bigger than 12 by... 6? So the next one will be bigger than 18 by... 18 by... 20. 30? The first day after my tutoring volunteering session. Totally frustration and complete upset. It's like a hammer to my face. I could have a lot of plan in my mind what I'm going to teach them, but sometimes their response is totally different from what I expect. Two things that we could do, we could add S. The first kid, he's very little, I think it's a second grade, he never concentrate. Then, when I tell them, how about let's read some kind of book, after one paragraph, they will say, my mom said that I cannot read in the book too long because that's not good for my eyes. So, of course, I feel a little upset when I think you are very smart. I have a lot of to teach you. I was kind of worried. The time is running through, but I really don't know how I could help the kid. Did I use the right method? Should I use the way we teach our kids in our country to teach them? So that's why I start a conversation, just like chatting every session. Okay. What, what, do, we do, what do we do today? Who is the most important person in your life? I would say my parents. Your parents? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your dad? Right? Then I start being like a friend with them. I thought that you would name your cat and dog like a hot dog. <laughs> Chicken nugget. <laughs> I found that they start opening a little bit more about themselves. Then I realized maybe something happened uh, in between her parents, and then she only lived with the male figure type of uh, family members. And maybe she kind of looked at me like a female figure. These students, I think they'd had a lot of adults come in and out of their lives. So to have a person that would care about them and touch base with them, for these students, that may be the one way that they're going to be able to have a successful life. Always remember, there are always is someone that cares about you. At least, at least that I remember and pray for you every day. Because she became a better student, she became more responsible. And I just know that my child has grown not only academically, but inside, emotionally. You're a third grader, how are you getting paid? Um, raise your hand, don't get out of your seat. Be respectful. My student has become much more compassionate to others and more respectful of me. 
by giving your love and saying something nice, you can create kindness in other hearts. Very good. And then we use the last five minutes to share the Jinx aphorism because we believe that a lot of the kids who are in this tutoring program, they have a lot of negative things in their lives. So we wanted to empower these kids from within. They're not like difficult to understand. It can be made very clear to them. It's something that they can use and practice. And so I think slowly, as children get more of these lessons, their behavior and their attitude towards others will change. When I change your value, when I change your life habits, academically, I don't think it's uh, it's just like that. Thank you for helping me get. I hope. <laughs> get what? Better. <laughs> but what I'm very sure about is that we can build relationship with the kids. Cool. After that, we can finally spend some time very focused on academic. The teachers at Xtran, I think, have really come to appreciate the Zoo G tutors. But before, it's not that they weren't supportive, I just don't think they felt like they were a partner with you. I don't think they had a clear picture about what you were about. As with all partnerships, when you first start working with someone, it's a new thing. They may not be used to it. It did feel like I was just sending my student out, like, there you go, go do some work with another teacher. And I had no idea what they actually did during that time, what they talked about. I think before, they was like, oh, it's time to go. And if they forgot, they forgot. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they were as is conscious. Sometimes they may forget to send a student or they forget to send the student with the appropriate type of book. Uh-huh. Greening. And so I think a big step in that direction was when you invited them all here. It was very helpful to have the extra teachers come over to our Tsuji campus. We come in, we're introduced to the foundation, we learn what, what the foundation does, we see a film on it. We talk about everybody can do good things, especially the bamboo bank, one cent a day. I especially liked the part that said, we're not just a foundation that serves people that come to us that are in need. We're the foundation that goes to find people that are in need, and that just really stuck with me. I got little goosebumps on my arms. I think now the communication, the lines of communication have really opened up and I really think it started with that invitation. So one of the things that is done differently this year is a written communication between the tutors and the teachers. The tutors would write to me every week and tell me what was accomplished, how they felt about it, and then I would write to the tutor the following weeks. I was not really sure that anything that we had been working together was able to help the kid until the teacher gave her a little note. So I received a note and the only thing the teacher wrote is that this student passed 100% score in all his reading tests. The teacher was very happy that the kids changed from very, very quiet to willing to work with other kids. So I feel very, very excited for the teacher to take me as a colleague. We're able to help the kids in a very substantial way. And it's all because the school is on board, the principal, the teachers all understand what we're about. One of the great things about having the partnership and really having more of a relationship with each of you is that often it's kind of fun. We, we begin to kind of brainstorm about next steps. So three years ago, we designed this one-day program for the students to go on this field trip to Tsuji to learn about the three R's, reduce, reduce, recycle. That is not a culture that we had of recycling at our schools. But parents were very uncomfortable because they didn't know what this Buddhist Tsuji Foundation was about. Some of our parents were very weary, and so they're like, my child isn't going there if I'm not going there. So um, we said, well, absolutely. We are so excited to have you here with us, and I really can't wait 
to show you all those fun classes that we have been preparing for you. So we spent, you know, hundreds of hours preparing to make sure that you know, every little kid that comes through our door has a wonderful time and they learn a lot of things. We turn off the faucet while brushing our teeth. So we're doing a relay activity with water and then two teams, there's team A and team B, and A would be like the water waster and then team B would be the water conserver. But we didn't tell the students that until the end and then we had them look at the measurement of the water and then see the comparison. Going into, there was this suspicion, uh, my child's not going without me. And then on the day, as I walked around and talked to the parents, they were just, wow. How would you reuse this box? We teach children how to reuse different materials through their own brainstorming. Can open the box and put glory in it. You could make another paper, like on the other side. I would give them examples of how to reuse a milk jug and roll up a ball of newspaper to make into, you know, a ball and toss the ball between the milk jugs. The parents were, oh, I'm learning so much about recycling today. Oh, I didn't know they had classes up here. Oh, I didn't know people could come here for help. What is this? Paper. What? Recycle me? In terms of our recycle lesson, we actually first help them identify what is recyclable and what is not recyclable. When they actually had to go into recycling and you know look at the bottle, look at and the paper and decide what it was, it was like a little bit more real for them. I don't think they really understood. Oh, there's really numbers, there's different kinds of bottles. Our parents are coming for a different reason now. They're coming because of the excitement generated by the Fuji Foundation. They know that the kids are going to learn a lot and they will have something to do with their children once they go home. At home right now, we're currently just doing bottles and cans where I could take this home and show my daughters how to separate the paper, the cardboard. They had different creative ways of teaching the kids how to reduce in water, which is a big thing in my house, having more than one kid. Hopefully the, the kids can uh, understand, you know, turning the water off when they're brushing their teeth and that sort of thing. And we have parents who are setting the example of that really helps our students practice the concepts that we teach at One Day Camp. So we can see that when everybody works together, we have amazing results. When I think about what it takes for a student to be happy, educated, good citizen, I think about all the different areas that need to be filled. And I think sometimes in public education, we can fill a certain amount of those pieces, but it's just not possible to meet all the needs of children. You really have to come together and have those partnerships. While educators at Xtrand and those at Tsuji are teaming up to help students where it's most needed, it's consistency that will be key. In the journal Remedial and Special Education, the result of two studies showed that at-risk students and students with learning disabilities who are failing classes could earn average or better grades on quizzes and tests if they had the support of trained adult tutors. So while educators at schools like Xtrand will continue to work day to day with their students, it's still going to take a lot of guidance, patience, and effort to set little ones on the right track. While Tsuji volunteers are working hard to make this a reality, we'll need to keep pooling together to make sure that every child's future is a success. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dilbar Shatterson, and I'll see you soon.